Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be sharing with you a hobby that I do that is not reading and that is not booktube related or YouTube that's not making videos. Um, and I'm really, really excited to share. So if you're new to my channel, then know that I am Shelly and this channel is mostly a book channel, but I've been dabbling in another hobby recently and I wanted to share that today. So if you're liking the vibe and you feel so inclined to subscribe, I would really encourage you to do so. And without any further rambling on, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this video. I'll give you the brief overview, a brief but extensive overview of this hobby, some context, but I'm going to try and make it brief. So I have created art of some kind for my entire life. Um, I've always dabbled in and out of different things, whether it be um, creating something out of paper and, and glue or adhesive, um, whether I was drawing or some sort of photography, I've always just kind of dabbled. Um, and it's always been a good deal of fun. And um, you also know, or my, this channel, if, you're, if you follow this channel at all, um, or if you don't, then you should know that I'm a huge fan of illustrated picture books. And I have been for over a decade now, and I've shared some of that love and passion on my channel. Um, I love sharing children's picture books and actually I review children's picture books as well. I haven't done a review very like super recently, but I had several reviews come out at the end of summer on Open Letters Review, which I am incredibly proud of. So I'm a reviewer of picture books, I'm a fanatic of children's picture books, and I create art. And so um, coming up closer to this year, uh, one of my dear friends, um, booktube acquaintances, Jennifer Brooks passed away and she created um, bookish journals. And so at the beginning of the year, I got myself into the habit in celebration of her life, I decided to keep a bookish journal, which got me into the habit of creating some sort of art thing <laughs> every day or once a week. Um, I would sort of, you know, draw a doodle so I could write down and keep track of my books. And more recently, when I finished that journal, I wanted to, um, I, I started a new journal and it wasn't really getting off the ground because I realized that I wanted to dabble not in this, like not in just keeping track of my books um, and having it being book related. I actually wanted to create, have something a little more, um, a, like I wanted something more inspiring. And so I went and searched of something more inspiring. And so, <laughs> and I'm so sad that I didn't get to post this in September because there was this incredible event. Um, you're really getting all the context. There was this incredible event um, from Elizabeth at Bukins and Books. Uh, she headed up this event called Framed in which uh, readers read an art book um, and there was an encouragement to view art of some kind, whether it be art in a gallery, uh, a little more time with your art books, or to go out and enjoy the architecture in your neighborhood and any kind of thing like that. Um, and then um, the last prompt was to create your own art. So I had every intention to share this in September, but then time got away from me and tra -la, tra la So thank you, Elizabeth, for essentially the push to make this video. So I, a few months ago, decided that I don't want to keep a bookish journal, but I still want to continue working on my art, which essentially brings us up to today. So what I decided to do was to take a book that I love very much and choose something in the book um, to recreate um, and, not, and to do it in my own way. I'm not trying to copy the person, I'm trying to learn from that person's art. So what I chose was Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. Hopefully I have some B-roll flying in to show you some close-ups of these, her illustrations of Virginia Lee Burton's illustrations and what I took away from this. So I think this was my very first project and I was dabbling in watercolor. Um, I had dabbled in some like marker type art, things with markers. And um, Ted had got me some beautiful markers for I think like Mother's Day or something. And then, um, and then I also, or maybe my birthday, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> and then I had some really lovely uh, colored pencils. So um, 
I chose a, a page from Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel from this book and I decided to recreate it three times and I chose a page that I was very inspired by. So I have always been very, very inspired by Virginia Lee Burton's um, landscapes, like the way that she uses the space on the page um, because she uses it, she has a lot of white space. She lays out her typography typography, the test text on the page to really match the illustrations and to be cohesive with the illustrations. Some books don't really think about that. You know, they have text on one side and the illustrative page on the other side. Um, but you can really tell that she has this playfulness of where she puts the typography down, where she puts the text down. And I really liked her playfulness with landscapes and, and the way she, um, you know, does her horizon lines. I, so anyways, I chose this hill, like cars, hill, road, <laughs> you'll see it. Um, there's a hill and these cars driving by and it's showing how Mike Mulligan um, and his steam shovel, Marianne, uh, dug through to flatten out some hills in order to build a road because in this, my dad had taught me when I first read this book or in one of the times that I had read this book that this is about the change in, this is about industrialization and the change of technology going from steam shovels to electric shovels and the way that extinction happens and things become, things that once were like top end of technology um, then die away. And in a lot of ways, Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann feel that change the most because because she is a steam shovel, she is known to be um, extinct. Um, you watch her, uh, you watch this progression of her becoming less and less useful, at least in the minds of everyday people. And anyway, so that's kind of the overview, overview of the story. But what you see is at first, as Virginia Lee Burton is laying out this story, you're seeing her usefulness. You're seeing Mary Ann and Mike Mulligan, their usefulness as a team and all of the things that they had accomplished. And one of which was helping uh, inlay roads. And so what I liked about this illustration in general is that you can see this little fence, um, go, you know, that's um, going along the hills, you know, and these houses that are sitting on the hills and then these clouds. She, I don't know how to explain it. She uses a faint color of blue um, to, to not to outline the clouds, but to show that the clouds are there. Hopefully I'm showing again some B-roll to sh exactly explain what I'm talking about. Um, and the cars are the, the nod to like the fifties and sixties style cars. So I really, and this was actually, let me see when this was published. Oh, it was first published in 1939. So the, the cars are really like that of the 1930s rather. Um, and so there's something about the nostalgia in me that Virginia Lee Burton brings up, whether it be because I read this book in childhood, um, or because, um, there's literally this nod, um, this, this nod to vintage, like a vintage style. Um, and I love her use of color and I love that you can see the texture on the page. So what I decided to do was to make this, um, iterate this book, iterate on this page three times. Um, I decided to draw it three times. Now, spoiler alert, not really a spoiler. Uh, the third time I think was my least successful. So the first uh, iteration, I'm gonna pull it out so I know what I'm talking about. The first two I did kind of in tandem. I did a, um, a colored pencil and I did a watercolor version. And I think the colored pencil worked out the best. I have a suspicion that colored pencil worked out the best because I have been working with colored pencil the longest um, in that I have drawn just with charcoal, like regular pencil and paper um, for a long time. And it's something that I've dabbled in and out of. Whereas watercolor, for me is a brand new medium and so I'm really just learning how it works and um, I'm just using what I got. I didn't buy anything new for this project. I had all of it lying around and so what was interesting was as I was recreating this page that Virgin Virginia Lee Burton has in Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, you notice the details of her work and it was so fantastic to really zoom in on some of um, to really notice on that sort of 
tedious level, um, maybe not tedious, but on that like microscopic level that I never noticed before when I'm flipping through and reading the pages and even when I pause to observe. So there are just things like the white space around the cars to make them pop on the road. And the like where I started to notice where the deepest, darkest black was on the page. My camera just stopped. It just was like fussy. It was like, we're stopping now. I hope it doesn't happen again. Um, but anyways, so what was so fascinating was I started just noticing all these details, the colors, um, the depth of color, the pops of color, the way she um, arranged, like artfully arranges the page, um, the way that she designs like the houses where she's playful, like on the hills, I started to notice that the some of the trees and the telephone poles are literally at a tilt, <laughs> you know, which defies, um, which in a lot of ways defies like our own like the laws of physics like we don't build telephones on a on a hill that is slanted um like it would be straight up and down but you know you see her playfulness in her illustrations and so it was this incredible deep dive into her work um so i did first did uh, color pencil more or less I sort of bebopped back and forth color pencil and watercolor and watercolor I noticed was really wonderful because I could actually mix the exact color that I wanted but the bad thing was is that the details of watercolor were difficult for me now it could be because I don't exactly have the right tools for it but I just noticed and or because it's a brand new medium for me but it was just hard to get some of those really fine lines and to really get the control down and then my least favorite um, which I sort of am like sort of ashamed to show was I did it in marker and I struggled mightily with marker. I ended up doing it three or four or five different times. Um, with marker, I got really good at doing the outline of this page. Um, and ultimately I don't really like how it turned out, but I also noticed that for me, marker almost has the least amount of control. You can't, there's no building it up to a darker black, for example, like the color is just black like one swipe and you don't really make it deeper by swiping it twice um, and you can't really make it lighter so I just struggled mightily with it and then I started a third iteration of it um, with where I was using paper and cutting it out and gluing and at that point I was like I'm kind of done with um, with this page in, page in general I've learned what I needed to learn and I actually learned that I really loved drawing with um water with not watercolor drawing with colored pencils so I decided to stick with that for my next project when I was trying to de decide something for my next project I knew that I wanted something simple and I really enjoyed the retro vintage feel and what I learned from my Virginia Lee Burton project but I knew I didn't really want something very modern and I was also again looking for something simple something with a lot of white space so that I could really focus in and focus on the details of a piece. So I decided to do Kate Greenaway. She might have been also on my mind because of some comments that I've gotten from people recently for a video on a video that's been more watched recently, which is the 10 best the 10 best illustrated picture books you should see before you die. It's a video I did some time ago and um it is doing I don't know, it's doing its thing on YouTube. People are still watching it and I'm getting a lot of comments about it. And so people were like, what about Kate Greenaway? So I might've pulled this because of comments, um, which is wonderful. It's the way that YouTube still inspires me. <laughs> I mean, it inspires me all the time, but it inspired me to like do something in real life. And, um, and then I ended up sort of riffing on this idea. So I chose uh, Mother Goose. This is a book I already own, Kate Greenaway's Mother Goose. Now this was first published in 1881. And I think I was really drawn to the vintage colors and also the simplicity of the work. And so the first one, well, what this book is, first of all, they are um, nursery rhymes. Um, there's like Mary, Mary, quite contrary. There is little Tom Tucker, Rockabye Baby. So there's a little poem on the bottom and Kate Greenaway's illustration above um, for this entire book. And it goes through a bunch of different nursery rhymes um, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water and Lucy Lockett lost her pocket. Um, so there's just an absolute ton of, not ton, but you know, there's a, um, a handful in this book of children's nursery rhymes and then Kate Greenaway, Greenaway's illustrations to go with those rhymes. And I chose, I actually chose for the first one partly because of simplicity and I don't really feel like I finished finished this piece. I finished it 
to the point where I was sort of done working on it, but I don't think I actually completed the piece, but I did Little Tom Tucker, which I was just uh, in love with Tom Tucker's little outfit, his hat, his collar, the little um, cropped jacket that he's wearing, the shoes, the socks, everything, the green of the fence. I was very, very, very inspired. Um, and so that's what I decided to recreate. And I really, really enjoyed I don't, this project. I really can admire the way that Kate Greenaway draws her faces, the characteristics of these little faces, the, the color palette, the shading. There was just a lot that I learned about it. And also, I don't think I mentioned, but my husband went to art school. And so the hardest part for me is always that initial sketch to help you get like all the proportions correct, um, where everything's gonna be placed. Because if that's off and then you color it all in and like you really kind of deepen everything up, if that is off uh, your proportions, the whole thing is gonna look wonky. So especially for this one, like I was struggling with the proportions and he would come in, you know, my husband would come in, kind of look over my shoulder. <laughs> he's always, he's so sweet. He doesn't hardly ever create pencil paper art himself. Um, he does more with photography. Um, he does quite a bit with photography actually, but in terms in terms of this, he'd kind of like peep over my shoulder <laughs> and just be, he was so sweet. And then be like, oh no, I, you know, you really need to make um, his body a lot longer, um, you know, and help me. Like I was struggling with the feet and stuff like that. So, you know, he gives me tips and tricks along the way um, to just get that initial sketch to be correct. Um, and so this was really fun. I was so pleased with how it turned out. I was so, so pleased. And actually at this point, I'll tell you that, um, so I am using Prisma colors um, for this, but I also had a whole bunch of Crayola colors mixed in. And that'll become relevant in a, in a little bit. Um, and sometimes Crayola has some incredible colors. Certain shades are just the absolute perfect blend of um, like green that I need, like that vintage, gorgeous, beautiful green that I'm looking for. Um, or that really stunning like um, bright sky blue that I'm, I'm, I'm wanting or a deep red. Um, but then I realized sort of the problem with Crayola pencils later on. Um, and I'll talk about that. I think in my next, my next, um, iteration of, or that my next art, art piece. So I really wanted to go for something more challenging. I was like, okay, I did something, I did the, you know, the little Tom Tucker, which was pretty simple. And now I want something interest, like a little more complex, but the, Interesting thing is that I didn't want it just to be complex. I actually chose the illustration that I found most inspiring in this Kate Greenaway book, and it is Mary Mary Quite Contrary. I really loved Mary's, uh, the expression on her face. I loved that she's standing against this green garden. I love her white dress. I love her hat. And this was, I think of all the pieces, my version doesn't look as so much like Kate Greenaway's, it actually looks more like Shelley's version of Kate Greenaway's um, Mary Mary Quite Contrary. And so I learned a lot from this piece. Um, I just I just learned a lot and I'll tell you about it now. So I love how mine turned out. <laughs> it was also a really big project. Um, covering the page from top to bottom in a color, like in art supplies or a colored pencil where you can see the strokes and you really have to pay attention to your blending and um, you know, you can't just like take a paintbrush and um, get a wash of color on the whole thing. For me, it was like, this was a huge project. And so I worked on it a little bit every couple of days for, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, 45 minutes. Um, I don't ever sit down and just do the whole thing. I just work on it a little bit after work. Sometimes I'll do a little chunk on the weekends. Often I'm listening to an audiobook when I'm doing this and it's awesome. Like it's so relaxing. <laughs> it's so, so relaxing. I learned from this piece that Crayola uh, Crayola colored pencils and other colored pencils like uh, more art like I use Prismacolor um, someone gifted me some watercolor colored pencils um, I'll show the brands like up close if I get a chance but they're not made the same all things all things are not equal in the colored pencil world and Crayola I noticed you can see the stroke of the pencil 
a lot um, more visibly. It's a lot harder to blend and you can definitely see, and I'll try and point out, like you can see the stroke of the pencil more um, with the colored pencils than you can um, with a Crayola colored pencil than you can with like a Prisma or watercolor colored pencil. Overall, when I sort of backed up and looked at it, I liked the way that it turned out, but I wish I would have done the whole thing in Prisma colored pencil um, or a different brand, something that blended better. I'm not saying that that brand is the best. I'm just saying that the tools that I was using, I wasn't paying attention to the quality of the tools. And so thus some of the qualities of the strokes are not as good. If I and if I had used a better quality tool, the quality of the strokes and the quality of the blending would have been better. So who knows, maybe I'll do it again, but it was kind of a lot, but I really, really, really enjoyed it. And um, it was a lot because there's a lot of color on the page that I had to fill up. And so when I was done, I could feel myself sort of rushing towards the end because I wanted to try something new. So I just, <laughs> so Beatrix Potter, The Tale of Benjamin Bunny, I only own like, I think two Beatrix Potter books. I need to get more because I really, really, really love um, her work. Uh, I really love her work. And so I decided to do um, this little bunny smoking a pipe. Um, and I took my time and I decided to kind of cycle out um, pretty much all of my Crayola colored pencils. I decided not to use it. And again, to take my time on it. And this one turned out, I think, the very best. It's again, like Shelly's version of Beatrix Potter. And I just learned a lot from it. I started really light. I use really, really light colors first. Even the outline of the black, it was like this really faint gray. And I just took, I, I was just not in a rush. And I loved this. Now I'm not quite finished, but I started to get that feeling with um, that I got from Mary Mary Quite Contrary where I wanted to like finish up really fast. And I, I don't, I don't really want to do that. Um, I don't, I don't want to rush to the end. And even my sweet husband is like, there's no reason to rush. And so I'm like, no, no, you're right. You're right. I don't really want to rush. Um, and, but I realized I really enjoy drawing the bunny rather than a human face. Um, I really love the color and the washes of color and building things up slowly so that you start with everything sort of this gray scale almost and then getting deeper and deeper as you go. I just really, really enjoyed it. And then I got to that point where I started to want to rush to finish to st because I want to start something new. And so I said, why don't I just start something new? And, um, and so what I ended up doing was uh, just starting something new. And so right now I'm using a Beatrix Potter page to help get the outline of the bunny, but I'm dressing my bunny differently. And instead of being in a patch of what I think is garlic and sort of recreating her entire page, I decided to put my bunny in hopefully a field of sunflowers and her outfit is a lot more 1960s rather than 1904. Um, and it's a little girl bunny, but I'm using like, I'm definitely, you know, being very, very much inspired by Beatrix Potter, but I'm trying to make it uh, my own. And it's been so fun, y'all. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like my heart is glowing as I'm telling you about this wonderful hobby. Um, it's been really fun. Um, it's been really rewarding. And as, oh, I didn't really get to mention, but like, as I've been going, um, as I've been going through the process of really deeply looking at, when you're recreating someone's art piece, um, and deeply looking at their art, um, you notice so many small details that I just would have never noticed. Like, for example, the smoking bunny, um, the pipe smoking bunny, just that, you know, he's holding a little stick behind his back and it looks like there's some pears growing at the bottom of the page and how um, the jacket is this incredibly velvety looking purple um, and the little, call, the little tie around his neck and all of these wonderful, incredible details that obviously Miss Potter looked, you know, she created this, she added these little details in and it's like you really get to appreciate that when you're using that to create your own work. Like when you're using it to, like when you're copying her work. Um, like I feel like I'm getting a master class in these amazing illustrators um, from like 18, 
1980s to 1940s, and I'm, I'm understanding the amount of work that it was put in. Not that I know what it's like to do this exact work. I mean, she, these all of these illustrators use different tools that I'm using, and I'm using like the tools that work best for me and the ones that I like working with the most. But it's like you're, it's like getting a deep dive into, it's like truly appreciating their work on a level that I have never yet, I've never really appreciated before. Um, and so this has just been the most incredible, the most wonderful project. And I, I figured I I'd wanted to do it a while back, you know, before I even had created some of these works. And um, I just hadn't really had the time um, for various reasons, but I figured, well, I don't know, I'll just sit down now to do it. I'm so glad I did. So if you have other hobbies that you do besides reading, if you also create art of some kind, I would love to know. And I would love to know how you go about creating that art. I really need to just wrap this up. Okay. That's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.